First of all, spoiler alert for Solo A Star Wars Story. Second of all, this is part two. If you wish to check out part one, see all the Easter eggs, you can check out the link in the description below. Scene where Han and Kira are about to start making out, they are interrupted by Tobias Beckett. This is obviously a similarity to the similar scene in Empire Strikes Back, where Han and Leia's kiss is interrupted by C. Freepio. In the film, there is a hilarious, over exaggerated scene where we are shown Lando's collection of multiple various capes showing his love for very uh, rich clothes. So, uh, what I have to say is that this is a very interesting thing, seeing how Lando originally had a cape in Empire Strikes Back, and in an interview, Billy D. Williams revealed that the cape was in fact one of the most, uh, in uh, like one of the reasons he was most excited to sort of play Lando, because he loved that cape so much. So it's great that they decided to put that into this movie by sort of introducing Lando as being very, uh, very, uh, uh, like, he likes capes. Tobias Beckett tells Han that there is a big shot gangster putting out this cool job on Tatooine. This highly indicates that this gangster is none other than Jabba the Selegic Teure, also known shortly as Jabba the Hutt, who is of course our favorite hot gangster from the world of Tatooine, who owns a palace and will later be an important part of Han's future life and smuggling career. In the scene where the marauders take off their helmets and hats, we see a strangely familiar looking alien in the background. This is because he has two members of these species have already appeared in Rogue One. The partisans of Saw Gerrera had two Two Tubes characters, Edrio Two Tubes and Benfic Two Tubes, who have been very interesting characters. And perhaps one of these is in fact Benfic or Edrio Two Tubes. Only time will tell, maybe we'll get more information on who this guy is, but it's a very cool easter egg. Dryden Voss is played by the actor Paul Bettany, who also coincidentally plays a character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the character of Vision. Now, the reason I'm putting this up is, first of all, it's kind of a cameo, but all actors play some other roles, even if they are great roles. Just uh, for, I'm putting this out because I actually didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't know who played Vision. I, f I just, I, I think I remember the name of the actor, but I always, I, like I wrote, read Vision is played by Paul Bettany and Dryden was played by Paul Bettany, but somehow my mind didn't connect the two. I, I, I didn't think they were played by the same actor because I didn't quite remember his name. And now that he was Paul Bettany, I'm hearing like, now that I definitely know the actor's name after Solo because Star Wars means very much to me. And basically, I listened to a video today on YouTube and they say, Vision of Colors excellently played by Paul Bettany. And I'm like, what? How did I not notice that? I mean, he was in his human form in Avengers Infinity War. How did I not notice it's the same actor? And that's why I'm putting it here just as a fun fact. In the last scene of the movie, not the last last one, but where the confrontation in the yacht happens, where sort of the old the cool plot twists with Beckett and stuff is revealed, when the second time that the crew visits Dryden Voss, Dryden Voss offers the crew a very tasty dish, which he calls Colo Clawfish. 
and this made me gasp in the theater, like literally. You could, my friend Alexei was there, and he was like, just, uh, he was like, what happened? What happened? Uh, and I explained to him because I understood what happened immediately. Because the thing is that cola clawfish, which he offered, uh, which was the dish, was actually one of the sea monsters that Jar Jar and Qui Gon Jinn and Obi Wan escaped from in the, the episode 1, The Phantom Menace in the Seas of Naboo. It was this crocodile slash eel one, and it was by far my favorite and most intimidating. And I love that they uh, established this universe by making it a dish in Dryden Voss's bar. You can also see a set of Mandalorian armors in various shots in Dryden Voss's chambers in the movie. As well as this other thing, which I assume, once again, is a Klatooine Paddy Frog. Now I'm gonna talk about that scene. Oh, that scene. That scene was... Oh. Uh, so, I would like to, first of all, uh, talk about uh, how... No. I'll talk first about Darth Maul's actors and stuff like that, and after that how he survived, because I know many people are confused. So I'll start off by saying that in The Phantom Menace, the first film of the prequels, uh, Darth Maul was played by actor Ray Park in Darth Maul makeup. However, George Lucas, the director of the film, wasn't quite satisfied with the voice of the actor. He didn't think that that tone quite matched what he envisioned for the character. So he took another actor called Peter Serafinovich, and basically Peter Serafinovich um, uh, the voice of Ray Park was deleted from the scenes and replaced with Peter Serafinovich voice, just like Darth Vader's was done in the original trilogy. After that, uh, the Clone Wars director or producer Dave Filoni decided to bring Maul back to life. Um, I'm gonna explain that later in the Clone Wars. In the Clone Wars and in Star Wars Rebels, Darth Maul was voiced by actor Sam Witwer, who also, fun fact, voiced Starkiller and uh, Palpatine in the Force Unleashed game. So basically, Sam Witwer became a very iconic voice for Darth Maul, even returning as him in the uh, Battlefront 2 game. And now I'm gonna talk about this movie. To be honest, I'm more in, uh, I uh, like more Peter Serafinovich's voice than Sam Witwer's for Darth Maul. So I was kind of disappointed, uh, disappointed a bit, but it was alright. Darth Maul in this movie was again played by the same actor, Ray Park, in the makeup. However, it dis not vo he wasn't voiced by Peter Serafinovich this time, but by Sam Witwer. Um, and now on to how Darth Maul survived. Uh, it's a pretty vague answer, but basically... Uh, Darth Maul was a fan favorite for many, and many were disappointed that he died so easily. So the Clone Wars people decided to use a sort of marketing trick, uh, I'd say it, and bring him back to life, which doesn't really make sense. Like, he somehow attached himself to this mechanical spider and the... Uh, somehow lived and then the switch mother Talzin brought him restored him to his previous self however um, that many fans just don't think about it but rather about the character of Maul in the Clone Wars which I have to agree was done pretty spot on with him wanting his revenge on Obi-Wan for making him suffer for so long and the same happening in Rebels until in Rebels, spoiler alert, 
he finally, finally dies peacefully at the hands of old Obi-Wan. After, uh, af after all this revenge, he takes ba uh, death as a gift as he has only lived in pain ever since and now can finally rest by knowing that the Chosen One will avenge him and, uh, and uh, sort of bring balance to the Force. And... Uh, uh, so this timeline sort of indicates that it's somewhere between the Clone Wars and Rebels. You see, in the Clone Wars, Darth Maul gathered a very large criminal army with lots of sort of groups of criminals there. The Pike Syndicate that I already mentioned in the previous video, the Black Sun, the Death Watch... However, Darth Sidious, who was of course his master, understood that Darth Maul was going against his plans uh, because Darth Maul's army distracted from the clone war that he has planned and sort of mixed up his uh, plans. And so Darth Sidious secretly arrived on Mandalore where Darth Maul now ruled and so, uh, killed his brother Savage Press and tortured him saying that he has one... Uh, a final sort of that he won't kill him because he has some other use for Darth Maul. After that, we don't hear anything of him until in Rebels we meet him on the uh, Temple of Malachor, the Sith planet, where he is already not under Darth Sidious's influence and uh, again uh, ruling by himself. So this suggests that Darth Sidious. Uh, the Darth Maul is still ruling his criminal army, perhaps under the orders from Darth Sidious, since Darth Sidious did tell that he's gonna watch over him and gonna... Um, but uh, nevertheless, this is a very cool concept and I'm very happy it was included in the movie, since it's a very good idea. Also, in the scene where Maul grabs the lightsaber using the Force, we can hear a familiar tune playing in the background. This is none other but Duel of the Fates from The Phantom Menace, which played during Maul's fight with Qui-Gon Jinn in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Maul also tells Kira to come to him to, on Daphomir. Daphomir is of course the planet that uh, f uh, was featured in the Clone Wars and that one episode of Star Wars Rebels, which was the homeworld of Maul and his clan, the Night Brothers and Night Sisters. Although Solo might be planning a sequel, it hasn't at all been confirmed yet. But if it is to happen, and that means that Daphomir will be shown in sort of uh, on the silver screen, I am totally for it. It would be great, since Daphomir was by far one of my favorite planets in the animated TV shows. In the original 1977 version of A New Hope, Han meets Greedo, and after uh, Greedo demands stuff like his money, Han just doesn't care and shoots him right in the face. But, however, George Lucas decided to change that in the special edition, where he was improving his content and sort of making Star Wars better. And many fans were very disappointed at the fact that now Greedo shoots Han first and uh, misses, but Han shoots him after that, as they thought that made Han less of a badass and more of a hero who's shot in defense, which I completely disagree with, but that doesn't matter. Because those fans were are still maybe to this day very angry about that change that Lucas made. However, Solo decided to calm them down a bit after Chan shoots first at Beckett. We know that Beckett was probably going to shoot him, as he says himself. However, with Han shooting him while he starts just saying uh, uh, some uh, sentence, made him a big, big uh, sort of gangster. And many fans might have been... Uh, sort of calmed down by this scene as like, yeah. 